Hi and welcome to Averages from Grouped Frequency Tables. Uh, just before we begin, a reminder that there is a notes jotter available for this video. Just check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. So when we collect data, sometimes it's more useful to collect data in groups. Um, instead of taking in every individual value and record them in a table, we might put things into groups. So an example would be if we were measuring the heights of everyone in a class. Instead of select, uh, writing down every single individual um, individual height, we might put people into groups like 110 centimeters, 120 centimeters. But the question is, what do these symbols here particularly mean? So if I'm dealing with these two symbols, what do they actually mean? Well, the key here is that this um, does not have a line underneath it, which means um, this is called an inequality. It means it, we are ranging from 110 to 120, but because we don't have a line on this side, we can't include the 110. But because we have the line in the underneath this one, we do include the 120. So this means that any person who was 110 point something all the way up to exactly 120 centimeters would be in this group. If someone was 110 centimeters exactly, they would have been in a previous group. So we've got a group of year seven students were asked how much pocket money they receive each week and the results are shown in the table. So we've got in this case, pocket money in pounds, um, and the first group is zero to one. Now again, if we just check here, this means that we are including zero, so people who get no pocket money whatsoever, all the way up to one pound. So basically anyone who got zero, all the way to 99 pence. In the next group, because we are including one, as soon as you get one pound or more, you'll be into the next group, but anywhere up to two pounds 99 and so on. Now, in the questions, we are being asked for the modal group. Now, what does that mean? Well, modal just comes from mode. It is the most common. The reason we uh, now call it the modal group is because we're dealing with group data, it has a slightly different name. There isn't a single mode, it is an actual group, which is the most common group. So again, we're looking for the most frequent. If we look down at our table, we want to look at the frequencies and we want to look for the highest frequency. Well, there it is, the number eight. Now for the modal group, that is quite clear that we're not talking about an answer being eight, but a group of values. And it is the group that is associated with it. It is the group five to seven. So when we write down the modal group, we must make sure we use the same symbols as are in the table. And so the most common amount of pocket money is between five and seven pounds. Which class interval contains the median? Now, class interval, what does that mean? Well, basically, class interval is just a fancy way of saying group. So all we're asking is which of these groups in the pocket money is the middle value in? So when we're finding the median from a table, we need to know um, the middle value. Now, for that, we need to know how many people we've actually asked. So we need to add up all of the frequencies. 2 plus 4 is 6, 12, 20. 23 so we've got 23 people so if i'm finding the median the little trick is take the number of people and add one and then half it that will tell me where to look so 23 plus 1 is 24 half that is 12 so i'm looking for the 12th person in the group and so i need to make a running total in the first group there are two people if I then include the one pound to three pound group, I'm up to six. If I include the three to five, I'm up to 12. And that was what I was looking for. I was looking for the 12th person. The 12th person would be the last one in that group. And therefore, which class interval contains the median? Well, it is this one here. And so our answer to that question would be the group three, to five. 
So next, for exactly the same set of data, we're asked to find an estimate of the mean pocket money. Now, I've put the word estimate in bold and italics there because it's very important. In this case, we are not going to be able to find the exact mean. And the reason for that is within every one of these groups, we don't know enough detail about how much people got. So in this first section here, all we know is that two people received anywhere between 0 and 99p. Now, that could be two people who got no pocket money whatsoever, and so their total would be 0. It could be two people who get 90 pence, so their total would be £1.80. It would change the, uh, change the mean completely if we knew those values. And so, because we don't know the exact values in here, we need to come up with some method for actually applying those values. And the key here is we need to make an estimate. And so we just need to estimate what this group here is actually worth. So if that group is between zero and one pound, well, the best estimate of how much those people would get would be right in the middle of that. It would be 0 0.5. In the second group, if they're getting between one and three pounds, again, the easiest way to represent that group will be go to the middle and say two. In the next group, between three and five, well, we will go with four. Between five and seven, let's go with six. With seven and ten, a little bit more tricky, what's halfway between seven and ten? It will be 8.5. And the reason we've done that is because we always try and use the midpoint when estimating the mean because it's the best way of getting a good idea of what the groups actually represent. Now it comes to what we did if we saw the previous video on finding the mean from a table. We are going to have to multiply our values together. The midpoint has become our x. And so we have our fx column. It's 2 times 0 0.5. It's 1. 4 times 2. 8. 6 times 4. 24, 8 times 6, 48, and 3 times 8, 25.5. And we need, to, for, uh, to work out the mean, I need the total of the FX column, and I need the total of the frequency column, because the frequency column is telling me how many people were involved. I don't want to know the total of this, and I don't want to know the total of the midpoints, because they aren't having any bearing on the answers. So let's bring up our calculator and let's add together some values. So 1 plus 8 plus 24 plus 48 plus 25.5 is 106.5. And if we add up the frequencies, we've already done this once, that was 23. And so if I want to work out the mean, or at least an estimate of the mean, I would have to divide 106.5 by 23. And if I do that, divided by 23, it comes out as not a particularly nice number, but one that we can round to two decimal places. 4.63 and the reason I would round to two decimal places there is we were dealing with money and therefore £4.63 would be the best answer. Okay so we're now told that the height of 25 sunflowers is recorded in the table and we want to find the modal group, the median class interval and an estimate of the mean. So we're going to put together everything that we've done so far. So straight away, we've been told there are 25 sunflowers. So what that tells me is the total frequency must be 25. If I add up those numbers, it should come to 25. Now we're looking for three different things. We're looking for the mode to begin with. The mode being the most common, the most frequent. And so I want to go down my frequency list until I hit the highest number. It is the number seven, but is the modal group and therefore I want the group which is associated with it, and that group is 70 to 90 centimetres. The median, we need to find 
where the median would exist. Well, there are 25 items. If we add one and half it, we'll be able to find out where that should be. It means it's going to be the 13th value. And so, if we make our running total, in the first group we had two people, or two sunflowers, I should say. Um, two plus five would take me to seven. If I add in the next group, it's 13. And there we go, that's the number we were looking for. We wanted the 13th value. So the 13th value must exist in this group. And therefore, our median class interval would be 50 to 70. Okay, so um, in order to work out the mean, we're going to have to add our extra columns uh, to the table. Um, so we're just going to add those in. And that's so that we can find our midpoints and then do our multiplication. So our midpoints for each group from 30 to 40, well, that will be 35. From 40 to 50 will be 45. 50 to 70, the middle will be 60. 70 to 90, the middle will be 80. 90 to 100 will be 95. And 100 to 140 would be 120. Now, just as uh, we are going here, I'm just going to also colour in the blocks just to make sure that I don't end up adding together anything that I don't need. Um, I need to know the frequency. Well, that's 25. Um, and I need to do a multiplication. So I need to multiply the frequency by the midpoint in each case. So 2 times 35 would be 70. 5 times 45 would be 225. 6 times 60 would be 360. 7 times 80 would be 560. 3 times 95 would be 285. And 2 times 120 will be 240. So then we just need to add all of those values together. So 5 plus 5 is going to be 10. Carry the 1. 7 plus 2 is 9. 15, 21, 29, uh, 33, 34. And 2 plus 3 is 5, 10, 12, 14. 17 so 1740 and so our mean is now going to come from the total of our final column 1740 divided by 25 the number of sunflowers we had and if we calculate that we could use a calculator uh, to do so 1740 divided by 25 equals 69 point six centimeters and so then we end with the exam question it came from the edexcel paper in november 2017 and it was on foundation paper one now that means it's a non-calculator question this time um, the table shows information about the weekly earnings of 20 people who work in a shop work out an estimate for the mean of the weekly earnings so as soon as we see estimate of the mean we need to be thinking about those extra columns. So we need to add in extra space afterwards. And what we need to know is, first of all, midpoints. So the midpoint of 150 and 250 is 200. 250 and 350 is 300. 350 and 450 is 400. 450 and 550 is 500. And 550 and 650 is 600 and we also need to know how many people there are it was told us in the question that it was 20 i'll also need the total of this one just going to color in these little sections just so i don't end up multiplying or adding anything together that i don't need and then a multiplication frequency times the midpoint so one times 200 is 200 11 times 300, well that is 3300. Zero, zero. 5 times 400 is 2000. 0 times 500, well that's 0. And 3 times 600 is 1800. And then we're going to have to add all of those together. 
So we'll have 0, 0, 8 plus 3 plus 2 is 13, and 2, 4, 7. So we've got 7, 3, 0, 0. If I want to get the mean, well that's going to be 7, 3, 0, 0 divided by 20. Let's do this a little bit easier. Let's get rid of the 0 at the end of each, so 7, 30 divided by 2. So let's use a bus stop. How many 2's going to 7? There are 3, with 1 left over. How many 2's going to 13? 6, with 1 left over. How many 2's going to 10? It's 5. So the average wage would be £365. There is a second part of this question. And it says that Nadia says the mean may not be the best average to use to represent this information. Do you agree with Nadia? You must justify your answer. So she's suggesting that the mean might not be that great. What in this information might suggest that she's correct? Well, let's look at how the data is set out. In this first area, between £150 and £450, we have 17 of the people. We then have an entire £100 gap with nobody in it. And then three people who seem to get paid an awful lot of money in comparison to everybody else. Now, this is an important feature about the mean. If you have extreme values, either values much bigger than the rest or values much smaller than the rest, they will distort the mean. And so that is what is happening in this situation. So Nadia is actually exactly right. It might not be the best, uh, best uh, average to use because of the outliers. So I would agree with Nadia. And I would agree because there are outliers. or extreme values. If this is the case, if there are extreme values, the median is often a much better choice because it won't be impacted by those very large or very small values.